how thick that is. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Wanneroo channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, we got a lot of videos that we're working on, especially now with the summertime. Trying to get a lot of different projects done on the property because especially the further north that you live, um, it's, it's almost the thing is as soon as it turns summer, it's like almost a countdown uh, to winter to actually get everything done uh, before winter and so working on a lot of stuff and today we're going to take a look at the makita lxt uh, brushless 10 inch telescoping pole saw kit 13 feet total length you can get it out to so what would we need this for and uh, what does it look like well it's a very very big box in fact the uh the postal lady whenever she delivered it she was like this box pretty much meets the max max dimensions that the u.s post office will actually handle so pretty decent size box it's impossible to get it all in one shot so we've gone ahead and set it on this but um basically with this video what we're going to do is uh we're going to get it out of the box we're going to put it together yeah we'll see what we get in the box we'll put it together um, and then we're going to take it out on the property. We're going to do a lot of different trimming with it. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up with basically our final conclusions, our final thoughts. Um, so where does this come into play? Well, one of the things is that if you live in a rural property and you have any sort of trails or you have any sort of roads or anything like that, um, especially in a more forested environment, you're eventually going to run into an issue that even if you trim all that back when you, you know, put the road in or you put the trail in, all this stuff is going to want to grow back out into the road. And uh, um, it's just going to be inevitable that you're going to have to have some way to trim it back. And with a lot of it, you know, you can reach it kind of, you know, with, uh, you know, some sort of trimmer or something like that. But some of it is kind of at a length where you really need one of these pole saws. So whenever I started looking around for, um, you know, a pole saw, basically it came down to, well, one of the issues was um, durability. And then also too, with a lot of these electric powered saws, uh, I wanted something to, that was compatible in terms of the battery packs uh, with the Makita stuff that I already have. So, you know, I don't, I've kind of been there before where you get all these different companies and you end up with all these different battery packs and all this stuff and I just wanted that compatibility with Makita. Also, I've had good luck with Makita. The stuff works real well and uh, super happy with it. So, so that's why we got this and uh, basically in terms of all the stuff that they have listed here on the box, uh, you can kind of read that as you're watching the video here, but, but um, you know, it seems to be a pretty good saw. Uh, from all accounts, so it's a thing of hey, let's get this out of the box Have a look at it put it together and then we're gonna go from there Okay folks, so here we are we've got everything unboxed and we're going to take a look at it now so first thing is um, the uh, main power unit here so it looks pretty sturdy we've got our two batteries that attach to the back there so uh, we'll need to check to see if those are charged and if not get those charged up but um, looks like a pretty pretty uh, sturdy unit um, overall um, you know typical kind of Makita uh, so you know it doesn't look cheap looks like it hold it will hold up for a while and uh you know back here at the back you know there is there's kind of a little bit of weight there with the battery packs and stuff like that but um you know that's kind of to be expected 
but um, yeah nice uh, sturdy kind of big unit there so we've got that then the other thing that we have is we have basically our electric chainsaw right here and we have a place for uh, chain oil and all that so we've got our little electric unit there uh, and next up we then have our guide bar here and also cover for that so pretty much got that so the nice thing with this is they included you know basically everything that you need to get going we have our instructions the other thing that we have is I wasn't expecting to get this with it but uh, basically a shoulder harness so looks like a decent shoulder harness that's uh, sturdy enough that should last a while you know a lot of times I've used different shoulder harnesses before and you know in some cases they're about worthless um, I have one for a Honda that works pretty good and uh, this one seems you know good enough with decent adjustment so um, again I wasn't expecting a harness with it but it looks like we got one kind of spread the weight around whenever you're using it so, so that's nice to include that then the other thing is uh, there's plenty of uh, chain oil it looks like I would imagine what this is for so that's good that's another thing we don't have to worry about then also they threw in a big old mamba jumbo uh, twin battery pack charger um, so that's that's a big plus right there uh, so you can charge up both battery packs now as I mentioned before uh, I already have Makita battery packs I probably got about four four of them I guess um, so you know that way I can easily charge up two at a time and should never run out of juice for anything that I do um, so that's that's good a little Allen key in here for something our little chainsaw tool include that safety glasses so that's nice usually I wear my own but um, you know always good to have extras around then the other thing is we get our chain here okay uh, so it looks like an Oregon brand chain made in Canada uh, so probably what I'll do is go ahead maybe order a couple of spares of these uh, to have around it's always interesting to see how long uh, chainsaw chains last uh, sometimes they seem like they crap out pretty quickly and other times they just go and go and go I guess it depends what you're cutting I've had kind of varying experience in terms of <laughs> good and bad with them but um, let's hope this one lasts you know a decent while and then the other thing that they give you too with that is they also give you um, uh, basically a way to to uh, um, I already have one of these tools actually but to uh, keep your uh, chain sharp so so you know that's nice that they threw that in so that's another thing that uh, you know uh, to go ahead and sharpen your um, sharpen your chain so it's another thing that you don't have to worry about buying so looks like with the whole kit basically what they did was uh, you know they threw in everything that you would need to keep you going for a while so you know unless the chain was to wear extremely prematurely um, you know this should get you going for a decent amount so um, you know if I can get through the end of the season and then you know replace the chain or whatever it might be hey that's that's fine with me so yeah um, it seems like they put together a nice little bit of kit here and essentially have everything you need to get going and get started so um, that to me is a good thing all right so next thing is we're gonna get all this stuff together and uh, we'll do our first test fire with it And along with the rest of the Makita stuff, um, we also have the long adjustable pole as well to attach everything to, so. All right, so um, actually reading the instructions and um, digging in here. So I've never used an electric chainsaw before, and one of the things I'm guessing is that um, it's, it's gonna kinda put a, a big load in the batteries, and 
we'll see how long the batteries actually end up lasting out in the field in practical use. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of this with the batteries, I've used Makita batteries before. Uh, there are a couple other things to kind of be aware of uh, when you're using the tool here is uh, there are some like uh, systems to kind of protect uh, the saw uh, and, um, you know, shut it down if there's any problems. So uh, an overload protection with it and then also too, um, if it's overheating or um, over discharging or if there's some issue um, with the battery. So you know kind of have that awareness uh you know in case uh it the saw sh shuts down for some reason or whatever there are some kind of some fail safes in there and then also too with the main power switch as well essentially they have uh, all these different fail safes to you know where the saw is just not going to turn itself on basically and um, go you know full 1980s horror movie you know all over the place so um, so there's number of fail safes there, so I'd familiar, fam, familiarize yourself with that. Then the other thing that it does have as well is this torque boost mode up to 60 seconds. So if you're cutting big branches and stuff like that, um, you'll get a bit of a boost. But again, I'm sure that that really kind of drains the batteries a bit. Uh, so, you know, that's another thing to familiarize yourself with. So just kind of have that awareness. So yeah, so now I'm gonna kind of look towards uh, getting this thing assembled now. Okay, so on the assembly um, with the main power unit right here, um, you know, not not too complicated or anything like that, but that little Allen key that they gave you, you're gonna use that. So you're gonna need to loosen uh, this bolt right here. This, you wanna leave this uh, the exact length that's set at right now, not mess with this thing at all. Uh, basically because when you go to insert the pole um, if you basically run it all the way up to here um, then the hole should uh, meet up perfectly so then down here uh, there are two screws you need to loosen this one and this one needs to come out basically all the way so when you get the pole it'll have like uh, where'd that go this little uh, black condom thing on the end of it there, okay? You need to basically pull that off and then um, insert uh, into here. Once you loosen this, loosen this and take that out. Put the pole in, tighten everything back up, and this uh, little screw right here, um, this should go right through the hole that's in the pole. Easy enough. All right, so to insert the electric chainsaw part, basically what we're going to need to do is loosen this up right here. The other nut on the chainsaw bit we're going to need to take out right here. Um, then also inside the little chainsaw there is like a little protective cover. They have this little rubber ding dong thing that before you insert the pole, you got to take, take this out and get rid of that. All right. Then all we uh, essentially have to do is just push all this together and tighten down the screw. Okay, so we just have to make sure that we're all lined up with that, uh, that first hole right there. And then uh, we can go ahead and get that screw tightened down and get the other screw tightened down. And we should be good to go for that. Okay, so we went ahead and got everything going with the guide bar and the chain. 
not too complicated to do especially if you've used chainsaws before so i would say the main thing is uh, with this um, just uh, follow the instructions um, the instructions are pretty detailed just take it one step at a time if you've never done it before um, and you should be good to go you know obviously you need to make sure that you um, get the chain and going in the right direction all that good stuff um, and all that so yeah not too hard to do and the other thing was is to make sure you put your bar and chain oil in the tank there the amount that they give you is fills up the tank about halfway but it sounded like from the instructions they wanted you to fill it all the way to the top so um, I just added some of my own bar and chain oil to it and uh, you know um, should be good to go and uh, hooked up the batteries and went ahead and did a quick test fire on it and um, you know ran it for about um, 30 seconds a minute something like that uh, we're getting heavy rain outside so can't do any stuff outside today so just had to basically stick it out the the barn door and give it a whir and um, everything seemed good uh, but the the one thing i found that i had to do was um you know come back and check your tension there so i had to come back and and tighten it up so if the if the saw is sitting here and this chain here is sagging any at all um you know you need to tighten it up and you know that's the same thing with using chainsaws anytime as uh, you know, you always need to check the tension on them and all that good stuff. So anyways, uh, we, it looks like we're pretty much all set to actually take it out and put it to use. Um, everything seems good to go and, uh, we'll get it out there. And, uh, when the weather gets good here, so probably in, in about a week or so and get it going. All right, so um, before we make any adjustments up there or mess around the chain, um, I trust the safeties, but I don't trust the safeties. It's just like with the firearm, you always treat a gun as if it's loaded. So um, the one thing that I'll do here is I'll take the battery packs off before I ever stick my hands up at the saw. So I'm going to get those off. All right, so before we get started, one thing I always like to do is just uh, check the tension of the chain. Um, so I just loosen this nut up here. And then uh, basically insert my little tool in, give it a little turn, make sure everything is nice and tight. Okay, everything is good. So now we can go ahead and tighten this back up. <clears throat> and then also too, the other thing is check to make sure you got enough chain oil right over here on the other side in the reservoir and we're all good on that. And then the other thing I do is I just have a little broom um, and uh, just give it a little sweep from last time I used it. Just all the different sawdust and, you know, uh, just various crap that kind of gets all jammed up in there sometimes. So, let's give that kind of just a nice brush. And, uh, yeah, just kind of keeping it just nice and clean. Okay. All right, so that should be good. So right now I got it kind of sized down to its smallest size. So if I think I'm going to have to go higher, um, what I can go ahead and do is uh, just go ahead and uh, loosen it up and just extend it out a bit. I think that should be good. And then just go ahead and tighten it up again. So you can see it's kind of spring loaded, so it's pretty easy. No problem at all. And then the other thing you might notice on the bar here, um, a lot of times what I do with uh, um, some of my chainsaws is this bar, just so you have even wear and stuff, I'll go ahead and I'll flip um, the bar around anytime that I change a chain uh, or whatever, um, just to kind of get even wear on the bar. I mean, I don't know if you really need to do that. Some people do it, you know, probably a lot of people don't, but um, it's just something that uh, that I was taught and I, I do. So 
that's why it looks like that. Okay, so to use it, um, pretty simple. We have an on and off switch here. We have kind of a grip safety like you would have on a Uzi or a 1911, and then we have our trigger. Um, so the first thing you'd have to do is turn it on. You'll get a green light on the left. That's just normal mode. And then if you want to use turbo mode, what you have to do is uh, essentially turn it off. And then when you turn it on, you have to hold down the button until the green light illuminates also on number two. Now you have the turbo mode activated for about 60 seconds, I believe it is. Um, so most of the time I find I don't need to use the turbo mode, but it's there if you want it. Um, and so, um, yeah, pretty easy in terms of that. Now, another thing in terms of the saw tension uh, with the chain. Now, keep in mind here, I have the battery packs uh, not attached, obviously, uh, just for safety reasons. Yes, there are the safeties and all that, but again, always being on the safe side. So whenever you do go to uh, tighten up your tension and all that, pretty much you just want to get it to a point where the saw chain here moves freely. Um, that's what I have found that, you know, pretty much works best. So you just have to kind of find that balance there with the tension. Um, and also too, that it's not slack or anything down here. So just enough so that the chain can, can move, um, cause you can tighten it up too much and then that'll cause you issues and, uh, it'll actually stop the saw and you'll see a little, the green light down there at the end will be blinking. So just uh, just kind of be aware of that and then make sure this nut here is tight as well so just check your uh, your tension on your chain and then periodically when you're using it um, I'll have the batteries not attached to it and I'll just give it a look over to make sure everything is still good and uh, everything is going fine all right folks so we're gonna do a big test with this saw and we've got this down tree here that came down last winter tree is probably 100 feet long maybe i'm thinking and yeah it's got some big tops on it so kind of the idea here is i think i'm going to try to trim some of the top off a bit and kind of just uh kind of square this up a little bit and get some of this stuff out of the way and then uh gradually work our way down and yeah a lot of this can just end up being fire pit wood or or uh, whatever but uh, we kind of need to start working on it so we can get it into pieces where we can haul it out of here and cut it up. So let's see what we can do. so good let's get this one down here damn <laughs> it's making short work of this I'll tell you that
this thing just continuously amazes me. All right, folks, so this is starting to get a little bit tricky here because we're pretty much getting up to the uh, the width of the, uh, the guide bar, pretty much. So let's see what we can do. All right, here we go. I'm in frame here. All right, folks, so it made quick work of that. That's for sure. So took off a lot of those pieces there. And yeah, now it's starting to get to the point where we're getting a little bit further up there. So, you know, <laughs> that'll probably be a thing there where uh, we can just get the chainsaw and play. But I got to tell you, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. It was so fast. I don't know, it seemed like it took like 10 minutes to get all that done. All right, folks, I think it's time to wrap up the, uh, the review now. If you do want to see more footage in the future, uh, feel free to post um, down below. Always happy to do more videos on stuff um, if people want to see it. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, I think because this thing is so long, what we're going to do is we'll break it down to a couple parts and we'll kind of go tip the butt basically and uh, kind of talk through everything that way. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll start with the saw end here. And how did the saw end work out? Well, it worked out pretty good um, in terms of the chain. Um, the chain here, this is the original chain. It's starting to kind of dull up a bit. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out with one of my spares. What I decided to do is buy a couple of spare chains basically and uh, as I need to throughout the season, I'll just uh, rotate them out. And then in the winter time, uh, when I have spare time sitting in the barn when it's cold outside and it's snowy and icy, I can either sit there and sharpen them myself or take it down to a local shop and have them do it. Um, that's the way I'm just gonna roll with it. I'm not gonna worry about sharpening stuff during the year, during the main season when I'm using this. Um, but the chain, plenty of power, cuts through stuff. The bar oil reservoir here holds plenty, um, had no issues at all in terms of like if I'm using it for the day or whatever, where I'm going to run out. Obviously keep track of it and make sure there's always bar oil in there, but no problems at all um, in terms of using it on a daily basis. It does pretty good. Um, seems to be, you know, um, it, it doesn't uh, basically drain the thing in, in like an hour or whatever. So you got plenty there. Um, the other thing is in terms of the only issue that I had with the uh, whole saw um, were in terms of anything breaking or having any issues was the tension slide right there. Um, that pin right here sheared at some point. Now, whether it was my fault because I let the tension go too slack on the chain or some other issue where somehow that snapped, Anyways, the, the pin broke. Well, I had different options in terms of how to fix it. Um, because this is so long, you can't send it into Makita, even though you can detach um, this head right here and send it into them. Um, they won't take it, so you have to take it to a Makita authorized uh, repair center if you want to have them do a warranty repair. But here's the thing, I looked online, um, found the replacement part for it, you can go, well, first of all, you can go to Makita um, and look up this saw on their website. They give you a whole parts diagram, all that. So I figured out which part it was um, and all. Went to um, e-replacement parts. They had the tension slide for $3. I bought it for three bucks and a couple bucks shipping. 
probably what I'll do is I'll just buy a couple of spares just to have on hand since it broke once but it's not too big of a deal um, to replace it all it took me about three or four minutes um, no problem at all it's just a matter of loosening this screw right here taking that off there's a plate there and then um, you just have to do a little fiddling um, to get it in, but it's really no big deal at all. If anyone ever needs uh, a video on that, uh, you can let me know in the comments below. Um, if you need to know how to do it, it's no big deal. Um, so, you know, um, stuff can break for different reasons. May have been my fault. Don't know. May have just been a failure there. Don't know. Okay. On oh, one last thing up here is make sure that you um, tension it uh, before each time you use it uh, good idea to do that right there All right, and then adjusting the length is is pretty easy on it it's just a matter of loosening up this collar and pulling this kind of in and out as you need and then tightening it back up again um, so no problems with that at all all right so down here on the business end we'll talk about a couple of things here um, absolutely no issues with this end at all no problems whatsoever uh, one thing that I did not use um, right here is I didn't hook into it with the harness so it has a harness that comes with it um, if this is something that you're going to be using for hours at a time and as a professional type job um, or um, if you don't have as much strength maybe um, to um, you know hold on to it and all that um, you know, then use the harness if you want. Uh, for me, with the, 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 the strength that I have and everything, um, it was no problem uh, to basically wield it around as I need to. So I ended up not using the harness. Um, but it's there if you do need to use it or if you want to use it. For me, typically what I would do is I'd use this for about 20 to 30 minutes at a time, um, get a good workout with it, cutting stuff up, and then I'd be ready to move on to do something else for the day. So, you know, um, I don't go out and, and typically do, do this for hours at a time. You know, 20, 30 minutes is good enough for me. And then, you know, switch to doing some other task or whatever. Um, the turbo mode, basically, that comes with it, um, you know, found that I didn't really need to use that all that much. Just the regular mode is just fine. Um, it seems to have pretty good safety. So um, you actually, whenever you go to use it, um, you've got to turn it on and then basically your hand has to be there holding that down to get it to work um, So that seems to work pretty good um, So no problems there and then last thing up here is the batteries. So you've got two Makita batteries that attach right there uh, I found that uh, you know if I'm using this for 30 minutes at a time Absolutely no problems at all in terms of the batteries being able to cope with that um, so I just have them charged up and I've brought spares with me when I use it typically and I never need to use them. So um, I would probably, uh, I, you know, I probably should have done like a timing on how, last, how long the batteries will actually last. But I just found in my general casual use that the two battery packs that I would attach to use it for that day they would get me through whatever I was doing. So I did not run into any issues at all with that at all. So, um, you know, so that's good. You don't have to sit there every 10 or 20 minutes changing out battery packs. So that's cool. So in the end, after a year of using this, what do we think about everything? Well, it's been an awesome piece of kit. Um, I think that uh, you do spend a little bit more than some of the off-brand tools that are out there. Uh, but you know in general except for that one little pin there breaking that little three dollar part uh, It's like any other Makita tool that I use it basically just runs like a train and don't really have any issues with it So um, so far with all the different Makita power tools. I've used I've not been disappointed Typically you pay a bit more up front um, But it seems like the tools they last and they do the job and they hold up so um, you know, I, I would hope and expect that this thing will last for many years to come and uh, it'll keep doing sterling service. For me, it's been a big force multiplier in terms of uh, previously dealing with trees and stuff hanging into the road with their branches and all that sort of stuff. 
is that you know I'd have to pull up the RTV, stand in the back of the bed of the RTV, um, and you know use um, some sort of hacksaw, you know uh, whatever you want to call it, tree saw, um, to cut the branch off. Very slow, very time consuming. It would take forever. This thing you can go along in a certain area where there's stuff sticking out into the road and and pretty much you're done. <laughs> So the shocking thing about this is how much time it actually saves me because um, doing all that stuff before in a very manual sort of way, you know, it would be like a, a major ordeal in terms of time, you know, hours at a time, you know, to clear different sections and stuff. And this thing, you kind of come along, walking along with it. And in five to 10 minutes, you know, you take everything out and you're done. <laughs> so anything for me that's going to save time where i can spend the time doing other stuff is great and uh so when you have a tool as good as this um, i think at the end of the day it's worth spending the money and having something like this if you have to maintain a long driveway or different roads on your property or whatever or just in general maybe the way your yard is set up with a lot of branches that grow out in into the open and you don't want to don't want them to do that you wanted to keep it more of an open space um, this is uh, definitely a useful piece of uh, kit that to have in your toolkit um, so i highly recommend it i've been very happy with it overall um, it's done a fantastic job and uh, i look forward to using it more in the future um, if you're interested in buying one check out the amazon link below um, and if you buy through that link it kicks back a couple of bucks to the channel and it uh, allows us to keep doing more and more videos and more and more reviews. Um, so yeah, it's been fun to do this review and I look forward to doing more in the future. If you do want to see more footage of me using it um, or any questions, I'm not a Makita representative or whatever, but um, you know, if you have any queries or whatever based on my knowledge or experience using it, um, or if you want to see more footage, just leave a, a message down below. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.